This is a Sterling series, Flourishing Families. And today I am joined with via the computer, Kathy Dufek from Parents Place. And she's gonna be talking with us about the parenting program, Triple P, and how she helps parents work through difficulties related to parenting. Right, Kathy, I'm, I'm super excited to sit down and talk with you today about Parents Place and specifically some of the programs you have there. Um, one that we're really interested in learning about is Triple P. And from what I was able to gather, Triple P stands for Positive Parenting Program. Is that correct? That is correct. And I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to be able to share some of the programs we do here at Parents Place and how we provide our services. And in particular, the, the fairly new Triple P parent program. Just to jump in, Kathy, when a family comes to Parents Place uh, for help with their family dynamics and what might be going on at their house related to their, their children, what, um, where do you start um, trying to understand how to help them? Well, most often we do receive a phone call or they may walk in and we start by assessing the need. You know, first of all, what are the ages of the children? What could the situation or maybe some concerns be? and how best can we direct them for the help that they need. It may be Triple P, it may be at another program we offer, but that is usually the start point. Where, what are, where are some of the families emotionally when they, when they come for the first time? Like what does that typical family look like when they come in? Well, we do see families from all walks of life and from every social and economic group. So uh, they come in though often a little emotionally distraught. They, they may have had some issues with a child in school and the teacher or the, uh, you know, some, a friend or a doctor may have recommended that they come to Parents Place and get some support here. Um, they're often struggling with some, some, sometimes small issues, sometimes fairly big issues that the child may be acting out or they're really stuck on how can they get this child to, to you know, manage their behaviors in, in a positive way that can be uh, effective for everyone. That totally makes sense. Do you, do you see that um, some of the demands of families today is different and that might also contribute to what brings them to, to Parents Place? Tremendously, tremendously. The, the stress, the, you know, many, many things that are going on in family, families' lives, um, you know, work, uh, additional family members, maybe elderly parents, um, stressed in many, many different areas. And sometimes children are overbooked and, and, you know, too busy for really a lot of family time. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about the overbooked thing? Because I, uh, I, I could see that being a tremendously difficult thing for families because uh, they don't want their kids to be not involved with things, but sometimes that feels like that gets way out of, way out of whack. Right, and, and we do see overscheduled parents and overscheduled children, and it's beginning earlier and earlier for the children. You know, they're in swim lessons sometimes at three, four years old, and on competitive swim teams by the time they're in first grade and second grade. And that's true with all sports, whether it's, you know, soccer, volleyball, basketball, or music. It could be, a, you know, a different extracurricular. And then parents are, are also overbooked and overextended you know, they, they want their own time, they want to socialize, they want to get their exercise time in, and then on top of that, they often have very, very busy workloads. Kathy, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, triple, the Triple P program at Parents Place and how, how that works to address some of the things that we were just identifying? Yes, I sure can. Um, triple P is an evidence-based trauma-informed program, and it, there are five different levels and they provide varying intensities of support through a range of different formats. It, it could be one-on-one, -on -one, it may be large group, small group, it may be a seminar, a workshop, or, or meeting individually with families, parents, and then maybe even including the children at some point, starting maybe on a four-week basis, you know, once a week for four weeks, but there's the opportunity to meet up to 12 weeks one-on-one, -on -one, once a week. So can you, can you talk to some of that? What kind of changes do you see in families um, after they seek help from a parenting advisor such as, such as Parenting Place? 
Yes. Well, there are two, two of us here at Parents Place that are certified in triple piece. So it would be myself or another one of my colleagues. And we meet with them and give them some ideas of, you know, why does a child behave the way they do? You know, behavior usually serves a purpose. And when they start looking at what's going on in that child's life, they have a little better understanding of why he's acting out and why it is at a certain time of day, what may be the trigger, what can we do as parents to help, you know, alleviate some of the stress or some of the behaviors that we don't want, and how can we get him to, you know, manage some of those frustrations and irritations. So looking at why they behave the way they do, what are all the factors that contribute to that, um, you know, obviously a little bit is the genetic makeup, but then there are also, you know, it's the environment. It's um, even outside of the environment. It may be media. It may be the social network. And then we look at monitoring those behaviors. When do they seem to happen the most often? And then really getting a big picture of why the child is doing this. And then from there, we can start implementing, you know, basic strategies that, you know, many of us know, but we sometimes get caught up in our own struggles that we forget to do and use. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. Um, could, do you have any examples of kind of, or a story that you could, could share, you know, omitting some names and kind of just describing how, you know, something that happened that when a, a parent came in with a situation that you were able to really help them through? Well, this is a very common one, and I see it often in the first class that we, first time we sit down. We provide them with the opportunity to offer descriptive praise to their child. You know, really looking and watching them during the day, and if they've done something that can be recognized in a positive way. You know, thank you, Johnny, so much for helping your sister pick up her toys. You really are a great big brother. You know, something as simple as that, and we send them home with trying to find positive things that first week that they can provide descriptive praise specific to that situation. And it is amazing how after the first week they come back and they'll say, I'm already seeing changes in my child's behavior. And we'll ask what they think that may be and why. And they immediately respond, you know, I've been so focused on the negative behavior that I have not given time or energy in appreciating the good behavior. And when I started recognizing the good, I started seeing more of it. Where in the past he was getting attention for all the negative. Can you talk to any of the, the evidence-based research that explains why uh, the behavioral changes occur just using some of the techniques that, you're, um, that you, you teach and help parents through? Well, like I said, there are 17 different strategies. We kind of look over, you know, what would work best for this child. We monitor. They're, they're pretty involved because you, you have to teach them over a period of time. And so there's thought switching. The way we really look at and, and imagine that situation in a different light rather than the one we were seeing it in. You know, instead of, for example, that Tommy always is bothering his sister. And he just does it until he can get a reaction from her, a negative reaction. Instead, looking at what is it that Tommy is really trying to express there. And maybe Tommy needs more attention from us and he wouldn't be bothering his sister. Or maybe Tommy is, not, is, is seeing that his sister isn't being helpful to him. You know, there's a lot of different ways that you can look at that. We use a, a lot of different strategies and begin slowly looking at what they can do as parents. Yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, what would be some of the concerns or pitfalls you, you would look for when helping a family? Like what would be some of the things that would prevent um, you know, your program and advice from, from working for parents? Well, I, I think often old patterns are, are hard to change, you know, and families get stuck in some of these negative patterns, um, yelling, screaming, hitting, and it doesn't work but they, they have a hard time changing those old patterns. That was what they, they, they were brought up with and that is what they continue. And when they realize this wasn't effective for me, we do explore their own parenting, their parents, the way they were parented and how they may want to do things differently or do some of the good things that their parents were doing. It takes a lot of time and energy 
to be a good parent. Parenting is an extremely challenging role, but it is one of the most important roles that we have. And building that relationship, as any relationship, happens over time and, and by the connections we make in a positive way with that individual. And, and children and parents, that's the longest relationship many of us will ever have. Yeah, that, that definitely makes sense. It, what was interesting that you just said was uh, uh, you really help them try to evaluate how they're doing and what they're doing and what their past, how their past informed how they're parenting today. And just speaking as a parent, it's, it's interesting hearing you say that. And my wife and I, we do have conversations about why we parent, but they're few and far between, um, mainly because there's, there's a lot of energy with two little kids and right. having that time to step back and like evaluate how are we parenting and what's our technique is not something I would imagine a lot of parents take the time to do. So it sounds like you're really helping facilitate that. Right. And, and sometimes it's really exploring how we have to make a balance, you know, even as a, as a couple, because we often come to the table with very different ideas on parenting. That's right. Re that's really cool. Um, so uh, just, a, just a question for, for people that are looking for services such as yours, how would you advise them to, to conduct that research? What would you say would be a, a good way for them to, to look and what should some of their considerations be? Well, we, we have a, a website um, and obviously Parents Place Inc. Um, our website is, is a great one. You can find most of our programs on that. Um, as well as you know, people making that first phone call. The United Way has opportunities. A lot of our funders have opportunities on their websites to connect with us, and they can send us um, the email that really gets us connected to them. Like I said, we have referrals from the schools, doctor's offices, other agencies, you know, the county, and those families call. And we also are on a bus line. A lot of people stop by when they see our sign, Parents Place. And they just drop in and say, well, you know, I think I need to get some support here. Um, could you, would you be able to speak a little bit about some of the programs that you guys offer on an ongoing basis to the community in general? Yes, definitely, definitely. We do offer over 50 programs every year right on site at our center. We have some large group rooms that are very, very um, welcoming and families come in in the evening or sometimes on Saturdays to attend a program. We have Love and Logic. We have a number of evidence-based, you know, nurturing program, um, trauma-informed programs. Uh, we have parenting for uh, parents in recovery, co-parenting, parents who are trying to parent separately but still be a positive influence in their child's life, anger management. You know, a lot of times little children really struggle with how to express their emotions in a positive way. So teaching them yeah. that anger is okay, but it's how we express it that can get us into trouble sometimes. So we have anger management for children down to your age of five, on through teens and into adult. Um, we are out in the community doing a great deal. We work in many of the schools, providing programming after school. And then we also go to daycare centers, um, the library. We have done a series of our triple P seminars and workshops at the libraries. And then we also are even in the, the Waukesha County Jail, working with mothers and fathers who will someday be reunited with their children and helping them oh, wow. to learn the skills that they need to be the best parents. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, so um, we, we do reach out in many, many ways to the community. Kathy, how long, how long have you been involved at uh, Parenting's Place? Parenting's I've been Place? at Parents' Place for over 30 years, and I just have such a passion for families, and I know how important it is because we have such a tremendous impact on how these little ones are going to respond to the world and how they're going to grow up. We are really the mirror for our children. Yeah, you sound, you sound super passionate. So I was, I was going to ask you if you could tell us, you know, the, your story behind how you got involved as a parenting advisor and kind of what led you on that path. That maybe having my own children when I had them and I realized what special gifts they were and how important my role was in, in bringing them up to be, you know, good, healthy individuals that will make the world a better place was really critical. And, and I also did a lot of volunteer work over the years when they were little and thought, I, I saw a lot of families that were really struggling 
and needed that ongoing support. And so I felt how really if we can help them here at Parents Place and provide that support and that knowledge and that individual help, it can make all the difference in the world. That's really cool. I appreciate you sharing that with me because, you know, I, I love I love people's backstories and hearing more about how they got into what they're doing because there's typically when people are doing it for a long period of time, there's there's a passion there and a, and a reason. So Yeah, definitely. Uh, I just want to thank, yeah, I just want to, Kathy, I want to thank you so much for taking this call with me today and really appreciate your your time. Um, well, and you're welcome. You're putting in to help the community. Um, if, so if people want to connect with Parents Place and learn more about Triple P, where would, where would they start? Well, they, they can give us a call. They can go to our webpage, www.parentsplacewi.org, and our number is 262-549-5575. We would love to talk to them. If they have any questions, we um, are always here to support them. Well, Kathy, again, I really do appreciate your time and, and speaking with us today and uh, being willing to share your story and more about Parents Place. Well, thank you much. We, we love to get the word out there because it is so important, but thank you much. Yep, thank you. Flourishing Families is a sterling series. Where we'll explore concepts related to healthy communication, family time, fiscal responsibility, emotional support, health and wellness, personal responsibility, and living a purpose-driven life. Please like and subscribe. We hope these stories are enriching and provoke ideas as you strive to build a strong family.